Okay, I'm going to go to part two of this Edexcel International A-Level Physics exam from October 2024 on Unit 1. So I just went through Section A, which is the multiple choice section. So if you uh, want to go and have a look at that first, um, they're in the same playlist. So if you know my channel or if you're a new subscriber, if you go to the home page and look under playlists, you'll be able to find the October 2024 series, okay? And that's how I tend to organize the um, playlists, so by the year of the exam. Okay, so um, if you watched it and you liked it and you've given me a thumbs up, thank you very much. Share it with any friends you think will be benefiting from it and make sure you subscribe so you know, you get notified if you hit that. I think you have to hit the bell icon next to the notification and they'll tell you when another video has been uploaded. There are also GCSEs, so if you've got brothers and sisters or relatives or friends who are doing GCSE, there are also uh, starting to be more and more GCSE um, edXL um, IGCSE exams uploaded as well. Okay, so in time for the mocks, you may want to have a look at those if you're doing IGCSE or if you know someone who is. So section B, uh, is what we're going to go through first. Probably do three questions in this next video. Question 11, two forces act on an object. The forces are perpendicular as shown. So it's one is at 1200 to the right. Another force is 2300 downwards. So uh, they, they want you to determine the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so they just want you to determine the magnitude. Okay, that means the size of the resultant force. They want you to use a scaled vector diagram because the force diagram they've given you here is not to scale deliberately. So what you've got to do is to draw it to scale. So I'm suggesting one centimeter to 200 newtons. So the 1200 newtons, each of these squares, yeah, the big squares, not the small squares, so five small squares equals one big square. Each of these squares is one centimeter. Yeah, where it was when I measured it. Yeah, so the 1200 newtons would be six squares across here. So that should be six squares. So that gives you the 1200 newtons. And then you add the 2300 newtons onto the end of the 1200 newtons. That's how you add vectors and you'll get a right angle triangle which should give you the resultant which is the magnitude. So the magnitude will be this distance. So you've got to measure it and I measured it to be 13.0 centimeters. Yeah, I'm measuring as accurately as possible and that will give you a conversion of 26 Newton, 2,600 Newtons, using the scale I suggest. Okay, it's as simple as that. And you get two marks for doing that. Okay, hope that was good. Question 12 is also a two mark question. So they, they start off with a multiple choice, which are one mark each, and now they've gone to very short questions. And then the question get longer and more difficult as you go through the paper. All right, so the next bit says the student has a spring of length 0.18 centimeters. So if the length is 0.18 centimeters, 0.18 meters, 18 centimeters, I should say, then the spring has, and the spring has a stiffness constant of 25 newtons per meter. And the student applies a force of it a force on it of 7.0 newtons. You'll notice that all the data provided is to two significant figures. Um, they want you to calculate the new length. So if you first use Hooke's law to work out the extension, then you can see that the extension will be the force divided by the stiffness constant, which are both given, and you'll get an extension of 28 centimeters or 0.28 meters. So if you want the new length, you've got to add the original length to the extension and you'll get 0.18 plus 0.28, two significant figures, will give you an answer of 0.46 meters to 
two significant figures. Okay? All right, so another two marks done. Question 13. This time, let's see how many marks this one is. It's a two-page one. It's five marks. It's another short-ish question. A bicycle pedal is connected to a circular chain, yeah, by a lever. So here's the lever. The length of the lever is 0.21 meters. They've given it to us later on. So I've already put that in. So I like to interact with the question when I'm reading it. Um, and then it says, a person of weight W stands on the pedal. So all their weight is on the pedal because they're standing on it. So the weight is pushing downwards, okay, on the pedal. Through, you see they've drawn it through the center of the ped pedal. So what do they want you to do? They want you to determine the moment of W about the pivot when theta is 24 degrees, okay? So if that's the case, this angle here is 24 degrees, yeah, then you can work out the component of uh, the, the lever, which is perpendicular to the line of the force. So you see I've drawn a dotted line to show that this is the perpendicular distance will be L cos theta, okay? Whenever you go through the angle, yeah, so the lever going through the angle theta gets to the adjacent, the lever being the hypotenuse, it will be cos, yeah? So you've got to use cos of theta, okay? They've also given us the weight in the data, okay? And I'm stressing that they're giving it to two significant figures. So once you know all of that, the moment will be W times L cos theta, yeah? And um, you just put them in to three significant figures. It will be 111 newtons, but you should round it up to two significant figures because all the data provided is to two significant figures. And you'll see at the end, I've rounded it up to, or rounded it down, I should say, to 110 newtons. Okay, that's the first part of this question, three marks done. It then says, uh, the chain ring exerts a force F on the chain. Yeah, so it's actually producing a forward force on the chain, they're talking about this one. So obviously you're pushing down and the force is then transmitted through the chain all the way around to here. Okay, and that's what causes the forward motion of the bicycle, if that's what it's attached to. So F is proportional to the moment of W. It's telling you that. So we know how to calculate the moment of W about the pivot. Yeah, so the pivot is that point. Uh, explain how F changes as theta increases from 0 to 90, okay? So if it changes from 0 to 90, uh, you, do, you don't need to do any uh, calculations. As theta increases, um, obviously the angle will get bigger, so the perpendicular distance, if the bigger angle will be here, for example, next time this distance will be smaller, yeah? The moment will then decrease because the projection on the dotted line, L cos theta, decreases. Okay? The perpendicular dis distance, in other words. So as theta decreases, so, th so force decreases, yeah, as theta increases. Okay? Because obviously, when it's all the way down, the projection will be zero. So when theta becomes 90, and maybe that's what we should have said, but the mark scheme doesn't go. When theta becomes 90, then the force will go to zero, okay? So maximum force will be at zero degrees, um, and minimum force will be at 90 degrees, and maybe they should have made that a third marking point. Okay, so 
I hope you found that useful. I'm going to take a pause. Um, I think the next question is longer. And yes, it's about core practical one, which is finding G in the lab. So if you found that useful, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe so you know when the next channel is going to be done. I do short videos because I'm doing them on my day off and uh, in between I go and do little jobs around so I don't sit for too long. Okay, so hopefully see you in the next video. Bye for now. Catch you later.